okay this is a short video about basic basic uh, biomechanical principles so let's talk a little bit about this low basic principles in terms of force fulcrum and moment of force okay in a very simple way just let's assume that i have a pen here and i hold that pen at that place and uh, i have this force here okay this is the this is the, the obvious uh, if i apply the force and i have a fulcrum i create a moment of force <clears throat> sorry again this is the fulcrum and once i apply the force i have a tendency a moment of force so if i have a force like zero i have no movement but if i have a force applied far away from the fulcrum i have a moment of force okay that's a moment of force. so this line here represents a line passing through all of the fulcrum so all of this fulcrum for this specific situation so if i apply the force exactly in the same line of the fulcrum i have no moment of force why because i need a distance if i have moment of force is a force by distance if i have a distance in between the point where i apply the force and the fulcrum if i have a distance therefore i have a moment of force okay all right so let's assume that I have another situation here and I transfer the force to the same line uh, of the fulcrum. I have all of the same, the same alignment. So if I have this force applied exactly through the fulcrum, once I have no distance, if the distance is zero, okay, so moment is zero, which is uh, absolutely very, very uh, unlikely to happen in orthodontics. Because every time you have a moment of force, because we don't place the brackets on the fulcrum, of course. If I don't place the brackets on the fulcrum for having a bodily movement, mm -hmm. I should produce a counter moment of force to avoid this pendulum movement, because I have a distance. So what should we do? All right, so instead of the bodily movement, I, most of the times I have the pendulum movement. All right, so this is the situation. Let's assume that I'm closing space here. Let's suppose that I have a, uh, extract the premolar and I want to close the space. So I have the, the coil and I have two resultants here and I apply the force far away from the fulcrums. So I have the tendency of closing the spaces, but I will, I will have a lack of parallelism of the roots, which means that I need to create a counter moment a counter moment to avoid this situation so i can create this counter mo moment here by several ways okay so let's take a little let me talk a little bit about class two and class three elastics all right so let's suppose that i have here all of the crowns and boots but the question is where are the fulcrums exactly located okay i can tell you about the posterity i can find the, the, the fulcrums at the, the furcation and for anterior like this incisor here i have the limits of the root and i will divide the root in three thirds apical middle and cervical thirds so the fulcrum is exactly in between the apical and the middle third okay so i have here the upper and i have the same here looking by the occlusal there are fulcrums the upper and lower as you can see let's suppose for some reason that i had a, here a situation where i place it an elastic from the upper canine to the lower molar so i produce it a resultant here the smaller and i can decompose this resultant here in both vertical and horizontal components let's assume that i have 100 grams of force of load here and now I understand that I have a triangle here, and this is very basic geometry. Uh, I have a square triangle, so once I have the angulation and I have no the amount of force, 100 grams of force, I can exactly calculate how much I need and how much I have for the vertical and horizontal components. Now, thinking about the upper canines, this is the same resultant, so this is the tendency that I have. I have the tendency of rotating the upper canines. 